Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjay Goha Thakurta, and with me, all the way from Berkeley in California and the United States of America, I have Professor Pranav Bordhan. He recently retired from the University of California at Berkeley, and he is, uh, of course. A very very well known economist who was educated at Presidency College in Kolkata and then at Cambridge University in England, and of course he served on the faculty of various reputed educational institutions, including the Massachusetts, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the Indian Statistical Institute, the Delhi School of Economics, and and he's of author of sixteen books, the editor of fourteen books, and. written dozens of essays and and popular articles in various newspapers and of course pu- other publications so thank you so much professor bordon for giving the viewers of news click your valuable time uh, and let me inform the viewers that this interview is going to be done in two parts and on two completely separate subjects in the first part of this discussion we're going to talk about politics in bengal and the second part of this discussion will be on the indian economy and issues pertaining to crony capitalism in the indian context so professor bordon let me start by asking you how do you read the verdict of the assembly elections in west bengal the results for which we got to know on the 2nd of may and we saw the incumbent government the ruling trinamool congress win by a sweeping it was a sweeping victory for the trinamool congress at the same time we saw for the first time the bharatiya janata party emerging as the biggest opposition party because the left and the congress were wiped out they got no seats in the state legislative assembly and what we also saw and and what was very very significant is that the bjp its vote share came down from the lok sabha elections in 2019 to the vidhan sabha elections so let me ask you to give you a few broader observations before i ask you specific questions on how do you read the electoral verdict in west bengal yes uh, thank you paranjay um on 2nd of may i certainly sighed a great sigh of relief even though i was never a fan of mamata banerji um uh, i was a great relief uh, because she could defeat uh, bjp however one should not exaggerate the the extent of the defeat uh yes the bjp vote share went down from the 2019 lok sabha Uh, election time, but Lok Sabha elections and Assembly elections, one should not uh, directly compare. I think it's uh, it should uh, one should bear in mind that what looks like a landslide victory in terms of seats is not a landslide victory uh, of TMC in terms of vote share. Yes, TMC vote share was about forty eight percent, but BJP vote share was about Thirty-eight uh, percent, which is a big percentage. But after all, Modi in Delhi rules uh, in 2019 landslide election with only about thirty-seven to thirty-eight percent of votes. And you can add to that the NDA share, which is that big. Yes, that comes to forty-four percent. But thirty-eight percent is a significant um, vote share. So, I think looking to the future. one has to be very careful because you know the way bjp calculates is not like the way you and i would calculate and some of their leaders have already expressed this they say essentially that in a state where there are large number of muslims and muslims voted 70 to 75% for tmc I mean, I mean, the official proportion of the Muslims as a share of the total population of West Bengal is around twenty-seven percent. Some would say twenty-seven percent. As the two thousand eleven census, um, maybe it has gone down, gone up a little bit. But anyway, so their calculation—I'm talking about the BJP calculation. 
that uh, when about 70 to 75 percent of Muslim votes are going for TMC, what proportion of votes of Hindus do they need to win in West Bengal? And their calculation, and I've seen this in some of their articles, their calculation, they need about 60, 62% of Hindu votes. As a matter of fact, in this election, they got only about 50%. So essentially, BJP thinks the gap they have to cover of Hindu votes is another 10%. So that's the way they calculate. Now, from our point of view, those of us, those of us who do not want to see BJP come to power in West Bengal, I think it is very, we should carefully note the composition of the votes. If you look at the CSDS um, election, uh, post-election survey. Center for the Study of Developing Societies, the Lok Niti Survey. Yes, please continue. Yes, for West Bengal election, if you look, that, um, look at that, you will see the majority of Hindu upper and middle class votes have gone to BJP. Even in West Bengal, in spite of all the talk about, you know, secularism and this and that, the majority of Hindu upper and middle classes have voted for uh, BJP. And then a substantial fraction, and I think it's a majority, if I remember right, majority of uh, scheduled caste vote, uh, particularly Motua vote, and a significant fraction, uh, I think the majority of Motua vote and a significant fraction of the Rajbangshi and of the scheduled caste vote um, or in the rest of India, we call Dalit vote. So it's a significant, if almost the majority of a scheduled caste or Dalit vote have gone for BJP. And if I may add, a fairly substantial section of the Adivasi vote also. The scheduled I was going to say that the Adivasis, but Compared to 2019, Adivasi's votes for BJP went down this time. Um, so uh, Adivasi's didn't vote as, as large a number as the scheduled caste did, uh, the Dalits did. So one has to keep this in mind. And one has to uh, remember that in some sense, BJP has already poisoned the well in, in West Bengal, which I thought would have been very difficult to do, but they have succeeded in doing so. Okay, and let me interrupt you briefly here. Would you interpret the verdict, and, and as we know the way the first past the post system works, first past the post, winner takes all, and despite Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee's personal, uh, Mamata Bandhapata's personal defeat in on the ground to her arch rival, Shubhendu Odhikari, who is now the leader of the opposition in the, in the Vidhan Sabha, would you interpret the verdict as more of a vote against the Bharti Janta Party than pro Trinamool Congress? And that a fairly substantial section of the electorate in West Bengal, almost half, as you pointed out, 48%, voted for TMC, not because they favored the TMC, but because they wanted to keep the BJP out or perceive that if the. My, answer would, be, my answer would be yes and no. I think large number of West Bengal voters, particularly women, voted for Mamata. Okay, There's no I'm, I'm, I'm going to come, come, come to the woman vote in a short while. But what I wanted to say is, do you think that the electorate or large sections of the electorate in West Bengal perceive that should the Bharti Janta Party come to power in West Bengal for the first time, that would, in a sense, change the politics and, and Narendra Modi's juggernaut would be unstoppable. And, and that uh, the, what, uh, you know, uh, the uh, uh, international bodies like V. Dem has said, the electoral autocracy in India would get a huge boost, to use the words of right. political scientists. So harsh. I, I would say this may be a dominant feeling among certain sections of middle classes around Kolkata, because Kolkata, by the way, uh, largely gone overwhelmingly for Chinamul. But as I already told you, the majority of upper and middle classes have voted for BJP. So if you take West Bengal as a whole, I'm not sure 
uh, that the stopping the juggernaut, uh, it certainly weighed with some people, but I'm not sure it weighed with the majority. Otherwise, the majority of, because these kind of things is more the upper and middle classes oh, really okay. think about. Okay. Uh, so about, about, I, about the woman, the women vote. We know right. that Mamata Bandapada currently happens to be the only woman chief minister in this country. And unlike many women political leaders who, uh, you know, had a male mentor, father, brother, husband, right. whatever, right. she's risen on her own steam. There's no doubt. On her own. But I think much more important for the women vote is the welfare measures that she has taken. The Kanyashri, uh, Shastra Sati, Duare Sharkar, and all these things, I think have been, she has become very popular with women because most of these are focused on women. In fact, uh, so let me add something here, uh, Professor Bodhan. There is some uh, anecdotal evidence to indicate that there were large numbers of families in West Bengal where the women voted very differently from the men. Exactly, exactly. I even saw just before the election, uh, one uh, press reporter talking to BJP families. And of course, men are the ones who are talking to them. And men said, of course, we, uh, we are against uh, Mamta and we, we're going to vote BJP. But as soon as the men went away a little on this, even in those families, the women whispered to the reporter said, we are for Didi. So that's, a, that's certainly... <coughs> Okay. But let me go into something that I really, uh, for news click, that I would like to emphasize. Going away from Mamata, uh, essentially, I think it is very important, apart from that it is not really that much of a uh, landslide victory as, as many people think. But more than that, I think the wiping out, complete wiping out of the left and Congress is something very important because in the, looking to, to the next few years in West Bengal, when Mamata's opposition is all from BJP, like the like nature of politics everywhere, you lean in that direction. Left is zero in the assembly, and all the opposition is from BJP. Like all politicians everywhere in the world do, when your main opposition, in order to, um, for an election, you lean in that direction not the leftward, maybe rightward, um, etc. I would not be surprised if Mamata does more uh, chandi, chandi part or as she, she, she was doing in this election a little bit, uh, chanted Gayatri mantra and all that. But anyway, to me, the major point is what should the left do in this situation? And the rest of this part of the talk, I want to address that issue. Okay. Before you do that, I have two questions for you, and you can give me very brief answers. The first question is, it was apparent to everybody that the Election Commission of India, which was supposed to be a neutral, autonomous, independent constitutional authority, that it was brazenly partisan. From the number of the fact that elections were held in eight phases, to the way in which in Stolkuchi the firing took place by paramilitary forces, Right. To the manner in which even when the second wave of COVID had begun, the, the Election Commission of India did not bring together the last three phases. Despite no, no, it's, it's now accepted everywhere that the constitutional bodies uh, um, quite often have been taken up, taken over by Modi's government. So I, I, I don't have a disagreement with you, but you are going on to ask some yeah. more specific question. Now, a second question. The BJP, the Bharti Janta Party, splurged on the elections. Huge amounts of money were spent. Does the electoral verdict in Bengal also indicate that money power has its limits? That even if you spend huge amounts of money on social media, yes, you, you want to distribute money and alcohol and whatever, uh, there'll be enough uh, takers for that. But that, does, that can influence voter choices. Electoral preferences only up to a point. Is this also an important message coming from the verdict uh, in Bengal? I think so. Uh, but notice that BJP also lost in uh, Tamil Nadu. BJP, of course, lost in, uh, got no seat in, in Kerala. But in Tamil Nadu also, 
But I think Mamata as an alternative, acceptable and popular leader made a big difference. And that there the women issue uh, comes up again because she was very, very popular with the women. Even upper class women, uh, not to speak of uh, lower caste, lower class women. Uh, so that made, I think money makes, uh, money helps, but not all the way. Um, similarly, uh, the, uh, I'm not sure if you think about the 2024 election, it may not go in a similar way because there they'll, people are electing Lok Sabha. So there they will think about the all India leader and Mamata yet is not an all India leader. No, we've seen that in several states in the country, including in Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, right. Orissa, where people are voting very differently in the uh, Vidhan Sabha elections and the Lok Sabha elections. Do you think that might happen in Bengal too in 2024? It might in 2024. All right. So money power and, uh, and um, the other, the, 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 the media and everything, uh, the power that they have, may work uh, more strongly for BJP in the 2024 election. Okay. Because there is the candidate oh. uh, and a uh, national leader. So to return to the point you wanted to elaborate on, to, to the, the issue you want to elaborate on, and that is really, what is the role of the left in Bengal? Left. It, it exactly. ruled Bengal for 34 years. It won seven consecutive elections, all the way from 1977. <laughs> Earlier, the Congress had ruled this country for right. three decades. But today, these two forces, both the Congress and the left, have been completely wiped out of the West Bengal Legislative Assembly. So what are the, right. what are the key lessons now that the left... I, I think there are many things here, and I'm going to talk about some of them. But one thing that's very important is that uh, uh, left made a big blunder and uh, that uh, of uh, equa equating Trinamool with BJP. In fact, they used words like Bijemul. Um, today, uh, I don't know whether you have seen the newspaper, today, um, Shurjakanta Mishra uh, uh, has come up openly that that was a big blunder. We did. And I think they now recognize it, it is a blunder, even though their own party, uh, ex-chief minister of Tripura, Manik Sharkar, has been warning about them about this uh, for quite even before the election, but they did not pay much attention. But at least uh, uh, late, uh, better late than never, uh, they have recognized this. Now that, even if you recognize it, there are many problems the left has to grapple with. They, one of the reasons they were so much against uh, Trinamul is because in a sense they have suffered from the local tyranny of Trinomul goons. In fact, in the 2018 uh, Panchayat elections, uh, one third of the, about one third of the Panchayats were well, uh, uncontested. Uncontested, correct. So that, that tells you about the local uh, mafia type tyranny of Trinomul. But having said that, let me add, this is not a qualitative difference from the CPM, the left rule earlier. The profile was far less. I mean, it was not. Was far less. It was not exactly. It was exactly. 15%. Or but, well, exactly. It's, exactly. Yeah, but it's not a difference in, it, it's a difference in degree, but not, not a qualitative difference. Uh, I have been to many of these neighborhoods during the CPM rule. They had local mafia. They had syndicate Raj. If you want to build something, build a house, uh, you have to buy materials at high prices or low quality from the local CPM Dada controlled syndicate or local committees. So local tyranny was there under CPM, particularly toward the lat latter part of the 34 year rule. And then Trinomul, in a sense, Trinomul has really learned and, 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 and took it to a larger extent, the same techniques that CPM used to use in terms of local tyranny. I think 
one of the first things that uh, the left has to do has to convince people because the people who were really suffered from that tyranny, they, they still have that memory. So you have to convince the local people we have, a, we have understood we made mistakes at that time. We will not allow the local goons to dominate the local neighborhoods. That's something you have to do with... Um, uh, I, I think both the, the Trinomul also needs to learn these lessons because I, I remember uh, um, I interviewed a, a Trinomul member of parliament, Shogot Rai, where he said what happened during the Panchayat election should not have happened. I mean, he said it in so many words. Right. So, first thing I would say, left has to convince with exact actual examples. Left, I think, still has under control, even though they have no assembly seat. I think this still, still controls some panchayats. And in those panchayats, why don't they do and show people that they really mean when they say they don't want to go back to that oh. earlier regime of tyranny? Oh. So first, say you convince people in those panchayats okay. where you... St Number one, sorry, were you going to say something? Yes, please continue because we are running out of okay. time. So right. Number two, concise, yes. number two, I think the, the le current leadership is uh, not merely too late. They're, they now admit their blunders. They are prone to blunders and the current leadership is discredited. I think they should uh, give the, uh, the leadership in the party to younger people. In, this in fact, time, for the first time, there were large they, numbers of young people who contested. Uh, they, they lost all of them. But you had a large... They're at the junior, junior level. They're at the junior level. I know there's some of them are the JNU. Junior level. But I think even at higher up levels, they should leave to two kinds of uh, new leaders. One is younger leaders. And the other is these... Uh, Dalit and Adibasi leaders, because uh, unlike unlike in other unlike in Kerala, uh, in West Bengal the leadership is dominated by upper castes. Okay, almost ninety five percent. Okay, uh, that's number two. Yes, number two. Anything else you want? To number yes. Number three is, I think, given that they have zero seats. I think it's unlikely, if you ask me, in the they next assembly. Obviously, they can't sink any lower. They can't sink any lower. Uh, but I think I don't think in the next uh, next uh, 2026 election, uh, I, I don't think the left is going to come back in a big way. But they can come back in a significant way if they apply their mind not so much to the election machinery, not so much to this short-run tactics of who do they ally with, they should focus their mind on changing the what they do when they reach the people. And I've already talked about local tyranny, but let me now add, uh, I'm going to add some things at the social level and at the economic level. I think it's a very good uh, sign they understood that doing social work makes them popular. In fact, in the, uh, I, you probably know, during the COVID yes. uh, pandemic, um, there are these uh, red volunteers who come in a motorcycle with the help of various kinds, masks or, or oxygen, etc. And they be that became, made them very popular. So do more social work. And in fact, during the Amphan, Amphan cycl uh, cyclone, they also did good social work. So I think uh, you apply not so much in electoral tactics of how to win the next election, more to winning people's hearts through various things. I'm, I'm going to make a list. The first one is social work of that kind. Next would be another social thing. Take up important social issues, uh, not necessarily um, uh, uh, economic issues, I'm going to talk about economic issues, but social issues that are important. 
Like, for example, unlike in many other states in India, I don't know how many people know this, uh, marriage at a very early age, of uh, marriage of little girls, actually, 14 year, 15 year, 16 year old marriage is very common in West Bengal, in rural West Bengal. And that is something. Now, some of the girls um, are now going to police to say that my parents are marrying me, um, I, but I want to study. CPM or left can take up these kind of causes which exercise real people. All right. The case of um, that. If you can briefly touch on the economic issues because uh, we have limited time, uh, Professor Borden. Um, so, uh, social issues, but the other social issues that I want to mention is that in Kerala, uh, the, they have used, they, they, have, they have not made this big distinction between class and caste. Nambudri, EMS Nambudripad, starting from his time, who was a Brahmin, but he got the Erava votes, the, 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 the OBC Dalit votes. I think you cannot ignore caste issues uh, in, in West Bengal. And even though you emphasize class issues, but you keep yourself open to caste mobilization and oh. try to appeal Motua votes, Rajbangshi votes, and so on. And the even as if in Adivashi votes. Adivashi votes, etc. So use those other categories of social mobilization, not just class mobilization. Now let me come to economic issues. Um, the West Bengal left has been very proud that they carried out land, some land reform, not great deal of land reform, but some land reform and decentralization, the panchayat system. Etc. And also Operation Borga, uh, the giving rights to the tiller. Operation Borga is the land, that's what land reform, the main thing is, is the Operation Barga and, and distributing some patta land to landless. Now, the, uh, I'll come to the land issue in a minute, but let me say decentralization in some sense has been distorted by two things. One, by Mamata Banerjee. Mamata Banerjee trusts the administration. So she trusts the BDO, local BDO, more than the local panchayats, panchayat pradhans. I think this has to change because that's going away from local democracy, something that CPM used to be very proud of. The other issue is that this local tyranny that I talked about and local corruption, which is really now one of the reasons Mamata wants to go away from uh, panchayats is because the panchayat's quite a leadership is quite often corrupt. Panchayat leadership is quite often corrupt. So and that's something CPM has to address in the panchayats that is still control, try to make examples of, of um, corruption free and, um, uh, uh, and without local, free of local tyranny. The other issue is land, land, land reform. I think the old types of land reform will no longer work because in, in West Bengal, as in Bangladesh, the land has become over time smaller and smaller and smaller Fragmentation of holdings. Yes, it's now so small, you have to go in the direction of cooperation. I'm not talking about cooperative farming. I'm talking about farming cooperative. Keep your land, uh, the land that you have, but you, you form cooperatives, which will do bargaining when, when you buy inputs, fertilizers, uh, things like that, or when you do marketing. And this is something, by the way, I used to discuss a lot with the CPM leaders um, who are my friends. I said, look, you know, you talk about uh, neoliberalism, this and that, you are against capitalism. I understand all that. But if you are against capitalism, you have to give people an alternative. It is not enough to say I'm against capitalism. You have to then show with examples how you can have alternative organization, non-capitalist way. And as soon as you say non-capitalist, they will say nationalize. Now, West Bengal is a graveyard 
of state failed state enterprises. So the old formula of nationalization will not work. So you start small organizations, non-capitalist organizations if you want, worker-managed organization if you want, and show that even, even not at the West Bengal level, even at the local level, you can succeed until and unless you have non-capitalist organizations which succeed, okay. you cannot convince people oh. that. Uh, I got you. And, and the other thing is their focus is on agitating for, West, uh, for wage increase. But that, that is accepting capitalism. Uh, wage increase is not enough. Most workers are not wage workers. Most workers are informal workers. Most workers are self-employed workers. Or unorganized. Uh, unorganized workers. So your trade unions have to not just enough to raise salaries of organized workers, which is a small island in a vast ocean of informal workers. Right. Trump, 90% uh, all over the country and also in West Bengal of the world. West Bengal. So again, not rhetoric. Create some organization, show that you can do it. In India, the few successful examples of informal workers' organizations are by Gandhians, like Seva and all that. Why, why can't the left have a single example okay. of a successful, successful organization of informal? Seva, Seva in Gujarat, the Self-Employed Women's Association. Right. So you carry out some examples that you can carry out uh, can do successful non-capitalist organizations and and then people will be convinced. Okay. Otherwise, simple, uh, you know, down with capitalists will not do. Uh, Professor Bordon, we've actually run out of time. I'm going to ask you a last question. I'll request you to give a short and a concise answer. <clears throat> what we've seen after the elections. Uh, the opposition to the Trinomul Congress has played up the whole issue of <coughs> post-poll violence. There are a lot of claims, a lot of allegations, a lot of counter So The second thing we see is that, according to some, the BJP has turned out to be a rather poor loser. It is attacking the Trinamool Congress, there have been CBI cases, there have been all kinds of other initiatives and the role of the governor, most importantly, the role of the governor. And uh, there's been a running battle, a feud, which is, you know, we don't see this kind of feud between uh, uh, the governor of a state and, and, the, and, and, the, and the incumbent chief minister uh, between... Uh, but Paranjay, my reaction, uh, I know all of this. My reaction to all this... How do you, what else do you expect from Modi Shah uh, regime? So assume the worst of them, but don't give them a handle. I know they're exaggerating the post-election violence, but there has been quite a bit of violence. So I think it is very important to deprecate the, that violence. Otherwise, BJP thrives on violence. It is a violent party. It is a party of communal authoritarianism. And they thrive on violence. They may handle by being violent yourself, even if your violence is less than theirs. So I think you should honestly admit that there has been violence. We are very sorry for it. And we are going to punish those who have been violent. But don't exaggerate it. Actually show cases where they are exaggerating. They're, they're using fake videos, fake news of violence and all that. But there has been violence. And this is not for the first time in Bengal, in Bengal, even under CPM rule, post-election, there is to be violence. Whoever win, and this goes back to the local mafia thing I was talking about. Local poly political arena has become a gangland warfare arena. It's turf wars between different mafias. So when one mafia wins, it tries, tries to be violent to the other mafia. And this has been going on, this is not today, but in, I used to see that when Congress and CPM is to fight, fight when and CPM and, 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 and Trinamool are fight, every year, every time. And of course, BJP is using it. And, 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 and so in order to fight 
this force of violence, which to me BJP represents, violence against minorities, violence against dissidents, etc. You be be extra careful and be apologetic if there has been violence and try to do something in order to reduce that violence. Oh. Um, so that is my reaction. And, that and the role of the governor in this regard? Governor I mean, is, is a, in the past. Plan. Governors have acted in an extremely partisan manner. They've not been autonomous. They are, after all, whether we like it or not, they are political. All the institutions, uh, you know, I don't want to emphasize this because everybody knows all the other institutions. Governor is only a small institution. Much bigger institutions have been taken over by uh, the Modi government. And of course, they're, they're, they're running rampant on, on those. But may I, uh, just a couple of things, just um, two sentences yeah, I want to- Let this be your concluding remarks. Yeah, so on the economic issues, I, uh, I just want to mention two things. I think in CPM time earlier, and then Trinamool also, even when they do welfare, they, they give to private goods, private services. I think the emphasis should be on public goods, infrastructure, Bijli Sarak Pani, which are public goods. Because otherwise what happens, CPM time, there's to be care and education also. Exactly. Public goods mean to me, these roads, a Bijli Sarak Pani and health and education. In education, for example, all over the world, the most important type education you can give to children is preschool education. So give a lot of emphasis on Anganwadis and preschool. So why doesn't left take up that as a major issue? Oh. And of course, then uh, universal health care uh, oh. because of the pandemic. So that's take up issues like that, focus on them and make it very apparent to people. That's the way to get public support, oh. not, not concentrate on electoral tactics. Okay, thank you so much, Professor Bordon, for giving us your views on, on, on politics in Bengal and what, according to you, the left should do if it wants to come out of, uh, if it wants to uh, rise from uh, its present position. It has no seats in the assembly. So you've outlined uh, a, a host of economic and, and social initiatives, which, according to you, should occupy the mind space of the left in the near future. Thank you so much for... Uh, speaking with Newsleak and for the viewers of Newsleak, I want to inform them that uh, Professor Pranav Bordhan will be speaking again to Newsleak in the second part of an an another interview I will be having with him. This time we'll the focus will be on India, the Indian economy and crony capitalism and oligarchy in the Indian context. Thank you very much for being with us and keep watching Newsleak. Thank <laughs> you.